I've been I've been tying these one half flats uh, for the last week or so. So I just want to try some do something a little bit different, uh, just because my head's spinning. So. The jigs that we're going to look at today, uh, primarily for pike and walleye, uh, but very old school uh, jigs that you would normally see uh, in the 70s. So let me put uh, my sample in the vise and let's switch over. So this jig, it's not that old. This was probably tied... Um, in the early 80s um, and this came from my father's tackle box there were certain patterns that he uh, had and continued to use uh, even though it was something that he didn't sell so as you can see we have uh, the bucktail wing top and bottom we have a chenille body and a calf tail tail which is that red tail and this pattern is very similar and takes a lot of its uh, design from a New England style what I would call a New England style uh, trolling streamers so you have that you have the top and top and bottom wing, uh, the bucktail hair wing. You have some sort of wrapped uh, body around the hook shank, but nothing on the sides. So really, uh, this jig is mimicking the style, mimicking the pattern of a New England style hair wing streamer which those were tied uh, both tandem and on single shank hooks so this is the pattern we're going to tie today it doesn't have a specific name that I that I know of um, there's some other jigs that I found in that box that I do plan on tying um, I think they were called the woolly woolly bugger pattern I think so um, but really interesting jigs. They still produce fish today. Uh, and like I said, we're doing them uh, jigs the size um, that you would typically fish uh, for pike, uh, pike, pickerel, walleye, all the fish would tee. But I did try to find a jig that was uh, similar and fairly typical of this style of jig in the time period that it was it was tied. So we're looking at jigs uh, late 60s, early 70s that this type of pattern was popular. And I really think it had to do with influences from the different uh, types of fishing um, that would overlap. So you know guys here on the east coast that would go up north and fish the New England states or uh, even into Canada where uh, trolling big long hair wing streamers were was very popular for pike and walleye and you can see how those uh, tying techniques and styles translated uh, to the jig patterns that were popular so what I have in the vise right now the jig that I, I chose is a shorter shank hook. It's a Mustad 32755. And this uh, jig is a quarter ounce with a number two hook. So 32755 number two. And it's pear shaped. Uh, I don't know the name, the specific name of this jig. Uh, written on the mold, it says pear head. You know, we could have just called it that because of the shape of the head itself. And uh, I've tied these for guys in the Finger Lakes. 
uh, goby patterns, so I, I just call it a goby head. We put in the vise this shorter shank hook. Now, I have it placed all the way back in the jaws of my vise. This doesn't give me much room uh, to access the whole shank of the hook, but we'll be able to make it work. If you wanted to tie this with it towards the front of your vise, that's fine too, because the way this, you know, adding the chenille and the uh, calf tail, the red calf tail. So we're tying it a lot like, it's almost like a giant crappy jig in terms of adding the chenille, but really the techniques and the style that we're tying really mimics that, uh, you know, like I said, 1970s New England style hair wing streamer. We will start with our size A rod wrapping thread, and I just have my regular pack bay. Good rod works well. Um, any thread that you're comfortable with, this is a round nylon thread that's unwaxed. I lock it on in the middle of the shank of the hook, and I just walk it back just past the point of the hook. this point we can take our calf tail I'm getting a pinch about like so size of your pinch will depend on you know a few things you know the under hair on the calf tail uh, if you're taking the pinch from a section where shorter hairs are lined up with uh, some longer hairs you know sometimes I'll just take a little bit thicker pinch knowing that I'm going to throw away those shorter hairs um, I don't this is a nice calf tail I don't have to restack per se but I did just pull out a few of those longer fibers just a couple hairs that were sticking out a little bit longer and on this jig We're going to extend the tail two thirds the length of the body past the bend of the hook. So if I was gonna tie this uh, with, with just bucktail, like a typical jig, of course we measure from the head of the jig, the length of the body past the bend of the hook, which is almost to the end of this silver part of the vise. It comes to roughly about here, the length of the body past the bend of the hook. So for this jig, we're going to tie it in so the hair lines up about with that last uh, mark on my on my vise. Keep this pinch tight. And when you lock this on, uh, you can do this a couple different ways. So that was four wraps towards the bend of the hook just to lock it on. You can give this a little press just so it goes around three sides of this hook shank. If you wanted to tie it in a way that it was uh, on all four sides, that's completely fine. Next, we will take a length of chenille. And this is a size two. This is just regular Danville chenille. A size two, that's their sizing chart uh, that I have in my collection uh, with sample cards that are very, very old. Uh, if you are just shopping for chenille, you know, this is a medium. Usually is how they're, they're labeled. I do strip out some of these fibers just to expose that thread in the center. And we can lock this on. And then walk your thread all the way up to the head of the jig. Before we continue, just 
a dab of that side. Now, like I said, this pattern is from around 1970, late 60s, early 70s is when it was common. There is a book uh, that has a lot of samples of this style jig. Uh, I think it's called How to Fish with Jigs. Fishing with Jigs or How to Fish with Jigs. Uh, it's by two guys, uh, Lance Gee and uh, I can't remember the other guy's name. I always want to call him Edwin. Edwin? Irwin? Uh, or Edwin Sace? Irwin Sace? I don't know. Somebody Google that uh, and let me know. Put that, put that in the comments down below. Uh, but how to fish with jigs. It's a small book. Looks like it was uh, done on a typewriter. The photos in the book itself um, kind of look like they laid some jigs on a photocopy machine. Um, don't quite remember when photocopying really became a thing. Um, sometime around the 70s, right? Maybe late 70s? I don't know. So we have our chenille locked on and I'm going to just wrap this away from me, bringing it around the hook shank between the jaws of the vise and my bobbin. In the first wrap, I'm gonna angle it towards the bend of the hook. And then as I bring it around, touching wraps all the way up to the head of the jig. On this last wrap, I'm going to bring it around and then angle the chenille so it is on the outside of my bobbin. So when I switch hands, I can pick up my bobbin and just begin wrapping, locking the chenille on in one step. Now on this sample, I'm going to tie it just like Dad did. I don't think it's necessary, but it's obvious that there is head cement and it actually goes a fair amount uh, back down the hook shank. He could have been a little heavy handed with the head cement uh, or he could have added head cement to the entire shank of the hook and as he wrapped it, it just soaked through the chenille. Trying to copy this as best we can, we're just going to add just a dab of head cement right there on our last wrap. So the wings of this jig are just a purple bucktail, uh, and that's top and top and belly wing. You can mix it up a little bit, use a couple colors that you like. Uh, just like with a regular jig, the darkest color would be the back wing. The, the uh, color that would be on the top of the jig when you fish it. So, like normal, we'll take our pinch, remove the fuzzies from the bottom, and then we'll switch hands and restack just to line up those tips want it to stay somewhat natural. We don't want it to look like it was put in a stacker, but we do want it to be slightly uniform. And as always, I'll I check the pinch just for any short hairs or hairs that are angled funny and I pull them right out. So this is a fairly sparse pinch because we're just going to have wings on the top and the bottom of the hook shank, nothing on the sides. And again, I'm just switching my grip and measuring from the collar to just about the end of the silver part in my vise. The interesting thing about this jig is uh, the silhouette 
that it creates. So just like a streamer, so you have the the chenille, which is the body of the jig, uh, adding some bulk, which uh, allows the top and bottom wings to flare out and give a nice fishy profile. So I, I just stopped just a second to finish that thought, but I let go of my bobbin. I did three wraps to lock that on, a couple, couple wraps towards the bend of the hook uh, and a wrap towards the head just to lock it on. So it's not terribly tight at this, at this stage. What I'm going to do is as I bring my bobbin around, I'm going to add the pressure by pulling straight up. What this does will pull this will pull the uh, bucktail straight down and not not twist it around the hook shank, so to speak. So now that I've added the pressure up, I can add a couple wraps where it's been the hook and a couple wraps just on the side uh, of the jig head to lock that into place. And as you can see, it's angled up. We have it just on the top of the jig. Now this also is going to be a slightly tight. I uh, turn my vise upside down so I can uh, reach this bottom side. I'll have to be a little careful trying to, you know, just get my big fat sausage fingers in between there. So it would be helpful on this type of pattern just to have the jig a little bit further towards the point of the vise if, if you have that. This Universal 2 vise, the jaws are smooth. Uh, it would be a little bit harder to do on a vise that has uh, the space spaces in it for the uh, the hook, the bend of the hook to fit in. So. Again, just restacking, pulling out some of the couple hairs. I just like. A couple hairs I just don't like. Like this one just sticking out the side, that can just go. And again, I'm also pulling out some of the hairs because we want to keep in mind this pinch needs to be fairly sparse because the wings are only top and bottom. Other books you might see this in, uh, Angler's Guide to Jigs and Jigging, can't remember the author of that one, and of course any of those Herders books that were put out by Herders that um, most tires, you know, whether you're a fly tire or saltwater tire or jig tire, uh, make spoons, make fishing lures, uh, all those books still have have some type of value. So, I'm happy with my pinch. Switch my hand one last time and keep this very, very tight. Again, one, two, three, four, five. So that was three wraps towards the bend of the hook, two wraps towards the head that were fairly loose. And then I will pull straight up and finish my wraps. At this point, you can turn your chicken device. And to finish this off again, I just take a loop of size A thread of a different color. Place it underneath my last wrap wraps towards the bend of the hook and then touching wraps back up to the head makes a nice clean looking collar it has that nice cone shape extending the profile of the head into the body and 
I'm gonna finish this off. A lacquer based head cement. Do it if we were doing this, I guess, completely uh, old school. Often what tires would use at that point would be uh, Duco cement thinned down with, uh, I think it was called mech. Lacquer thinner would work too, I think, but um, mech, which is, I have some in my supplies. It's, it's like a super heavy duty lacquer thinner, I guess. I don't know what else to call it. It stands for something and I never really cared to know, but uh, there's uh, Piebold, uh, I think it was called. It was it was another glue very similar to the Duco cement, uh, which you know came in a tube. Regular, it was kind of a household type cement, and uh, guys would thin that down and, and use that for their streamer um, head cement for their streamers. And I know in the Herders books, he always he always talks about some type of glue that he would use for his uh, head cement. So back in the day you had spar varnish, you had lacquer, uh, and then you had you know household glues and um, couldn't just run down to the bait shop and pick up the materials that we have now. You know you couldn't get online and go to Bass Pro and have a dozen different head cements to pick from. So. But on this, we're using our lacquer-based head cement. Thin down slightly, so it saturates the threads. And there we go. So this would also look really good on a little bit bigger jig. You know, one half, three eighths. Would be really neat. we do now my sample Back in the way. so my sample uh, the head is actually a, a one half so it's a little bit bigger and the hook shank even though it's the same three two seven five five is a little bit bigger so you have a little bit longer hook shank uh, and what I did is I chose a I chose a uh, head style that was uh, very similar what you find uh, in a lot of the examples that you'll find in books uh, like I said uh, late 60s early 70s is where you're gonna see samples of these type of jigs so there you have it. Uh, it's very interesting to me tying some of these older patterns because it appears to me uh, that there is an overlap of styles and techniques both in uh, fishing and as well as uh, the tying that's involved. For this pattern, it really appears to me uh, that they were trying to mimic a pattern that was used specifically on a streamer and uh, translating it into um, a jig body and, and they work you know I've, I've caught fish on uh, patterns like this so I'm hoping to do a few uh, more of these types of jigs um, I got a half a dozen books or so in my collection I'm gonna flip through some of them and and uh, try to find some of those lost patterns and, and tie them up again like I said, this one today has no name as far as I know. If you if you know what this type of jig is called, or even if you know what, what type of head this is, the, you know, what I call a pair, what I call a pair, um, if you know what that is, put those comments down below. Um, if you have any questions on what we did here today, uh, also include that in the comment section. Go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any new content. 
And until next time, guys, keep tying and tight lines.